Hey, how's it going? Rusty Hazelden here, and welcome to The Art of V-Ray, Volume 1. In this video, we're going to harness the power of V-Ray to render an exciting television commercial featuring colorful splashes of paint. To get the most out of this video, make sure to download the project files linked in the description and give this tutorial a go. In this video, we're going to learn how to light a scene containing shiny metal objects. Start off by opening the scene file called Chapter 4. This scene contains two paint cans, a paintbrush, a curved studio backdrop, and several lights. The lights in the scene are shaped like rectangles. They're called V-Ray Rectangle Lights, and they can be created by clicking the V-Ray Light Rect button in the V-Ray shelf. Rectangle lights are also known as area lights, and they emit light from their surface into the scene. The arrow on the light surface indicates the direction of the light. The paint cans and the paint brush contain highly reflective metal surfaces. Rendering a photorealistic metal surface is very similar to taking a photograph of a mirror. Most of what you see in the image are reflections of the environment around the object. Since the paint cans are in a dark studio, the only reflections we're going to see on the metal surfaces will be the studio lights. This means the rectangle lights are going to both light the scene and provide us with interesting reflections on the metal surfaces. To begin lighting this shot, let's switch to the render cam in the viewport. Click the V-Ray icon in the viewport to start up the IPR renderer. Right now, things are looking rather dark since all of the studio lights are turned off. Let's open up the V-Ray Light Lister by clicking the icon in the shelf. The V-Ray Light Lister provides a list of all the lights in the scene and makes it very easy to adjust their attributes. Let's start by turning on the lights called Rim Light 1 and Rim Light 2. To turn on the rim lights, simply check the boxes next to the light names. The rim lights are placed just behind the paint cans, and they light the sides of the paint cans. These lights help to separate the paint cans from the dark background. The rim lights may seem rather dim at this point, but that is intentional. Since we have four lights in the scene, it's a good idea to build up the lighting levels gradually so things don't get blown out. Click the checkbox next to the fill light to turn it on. Now we can see the front of the cans much more clearly. The fill light is used to provide even light on the paint cans so we can read the labels. The brightness of the fill light can be adjusted by changing the value in the multiplier field. Right now it's 60. To make the fill light darker, type in a lower number like 10 and press enter. To make it brighter, type in a larger number like 200. Let's drop the brightness back down to 60. With two rim lights and the fill light, the scene is starting to look pretty good. There are two areas in the shot that still need more light. We can see the orange handle of the paintbrush, but we can't make out the metal band or the actual bristles. Also, the lids on the paint cans are lit on the edges, but the middle areas are still quite dark. This is where the key light comes in handy. Click the checkbox next to the key light to turn it on. Now we can see the entire paintbrush. The orange plastic handle has a white reflection on the surface and the metal band stands out. The lids on the paint cans now have bright highlights in the middle. Let's toggle the key light off and then back on so we can clearly see the difference. The bright highlights on the metal surfaces are reflections of the lights in the scene. These reflections are also called specular highlights. We can make the highlights brighter by increasing the intensity of the key light. Let's give this a try. Change the multiplier of the key light to 20 and press enter. Now the specular highlights on the paintbrush are even brighter. Stop the viewport IPR render by clicking the V-Ray icon in the viewport. Let's do a final render of this shot in the VFB. Open the VFB window by clicking the shelf icon. Then right click on the teapot and select render cam to start the render. Well, I think we've really nailed the dramatic lighting. It's not easy rendering black paint cans in a dark studio. By creating a lighting setup with four rectangle lights, 
we've been able to create an environment that provides interesting specular highlights on the reflective surfaces. The Paint Splash project has covered a wide range of V-Ray techniques that I'm sure you'll be able to apply to your next project. Well, let me know if you like this video and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next tutorial. If you have any questions or suggestions, post them down below in the comments and I'll take a look. I'm Rusty Hazelden and thanks for watching.